my name is Matt Kloon, and I am your host today for the 2018 Road to Recovery kickoff show. As a person in long-term recovery, I am honored to be part of this program and the National Recovery Month effort. This episode centers on Recovery Month, a celebration that takes place every year in September. We will also discuss some of the important topics planned for this year's Road to Recovery episodes. The Recovery Month observance celebrates people living their lives in recovery, raises awareness and understanding of mental and substance use disorders, and recognizes those who work in the field of behavioral health. The 2018 theme, Join the Voices for Recovery, Invest in Health, Home, Purpose, and Community, explores how a strong community, a sense of purpose, workforce leadership, family involvement, and integrated care work together to provide effective treatment and services for individuals with mental and substance use disorders. The 2018 Recovery Month observance will highlight inspiring stories to help people from all walks of life and their path to hope, health, and wellness. It will encourage policymakers, urban communities, healthcare providers, the media, and all of us really to invest in health, home, purpose, and community. When we incorporate effective treatment of mental and substance use disorders into all aspects of care, we invest in the health and well-being of others. We invest in home and stable living environments through support of our family, friends, and neighbors experiencing a mental illness or substance use disorder. We invest in purpose when those of us in recovery tell our stories, accomplishments, what we achieve through recovery, such as being employed, going to school, or other meaningful activities that give purpose to us every day. And finally, when we work together, we invest in healthy communities and work to ensure that behavioral health services are available at the local, state, and national levels. For nearly 30 years, Recovery Month has educated Americans about the facts about mental and substance use disorders, and that treatment is effective and recovery is possible. Nearly one in 10 Americans struggle with a substance use disorder and about one in five have a mental health condition. No individual, no family, nor community is immune to these disorders. Recovery Month sends the critical message that treatment and recovery services for mental and substance use disorders and support from the community make it possible for individuals in recovery to lead healthy, rewarding, and productive lives. Sharing recovery stories with friends, families, communities, policymakers, and the media help to increase awareness about recovery and the importance of investing in treatment and recovery services. In support of Recovery Month, the Road to Recovery series brings together experts from many professions and the voice of the recovery community to discuss critical issues in the behavioral health care field. The 2018 season will highlight the benefits of evidence-based practices such as peer support services, medication-assisted treatment, and trauma-informed care, and how to achieve positive, measurable results for long-term recovery. Beyond the resources presented in these shows, there are other ways for you to engage your local communities in support of recovery. Host or participate in Recovery Month events in 2018 and promote positive conversations about prevention, treatment, and recovery services in your community. Promote the benefits of investment in health, home, purpose, and community, and the positive outcomes achieved through access to high-quality treatment and recovery support services. We have compiled a glimpse of events and stories from across the country shared with us from Recovery Month 2017. Let's take a look back at these events, get inspired, begin to plan how you can help your community in 2018 to celebrate individuals in recovery and those who support them every single day. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. I'm Paolo Del Vecchio, Director of SAMHSA's Center for Mental Health Services and your MC for today. Each year, SAMHSA releases the most recent findings from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, what is commonly referred to as NISDA. Recovery Month is special to me for many reasons. I, among many in the room, and thousands of people across this great nation, am your proof and evidence that treatment works and people do recover. Let's talk for a minute about the prevalence of mental and substance use disorders in America. And this is uh, data that uh, the NISDA gives us every year. 
What we learned in 2016 is that 18.3% of, of people over the age of 12 in the United States, or 44.7 million people, um, had a mental illness. In addition, we have another 20 million people, or 7.5% of the population, who meet diagnostic criteria for a substance use disorder. And when we look more closely at that data, we see that 37% of them struggled with illicit drugs, 75% of them struggled with alcohol, and 12% struggled with both illicit drugs and alcohol. I can tell you that President Trump strongly supports people in recovery. He is a yeah. He has designated September as National Recovery Month. In uh, his statement uh, with that declaration, he wrote the following. Solving our nation's drug and alcohol problem, re problems requires both a strong public health response and a strong public safety response that stems the flow of illicit drugs into our communities. During Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month and throughout the year, let us remember those who have bravely conquered their addiction. We also pray for those currently suffering so they may, through effective treatment and the strength of family and friends, transform their lives. Finally, let us also thank the family members, friends, and healthcare providers who provide much needed assistance, encouragement, and love to support Americans in recovery. After one of the lowest points in my life, I was grateful to know that I was not alone. The reason I use the word grateful is because I needed to see someone I could identify with actually see them get help and pursue recovery too. For me, that person was my mom, who was challenged with mental illness and a substance use disorder. After my mom disclosed her own diagnosis and the problems she experienced, that prompted me to seek help for myself and start my own recovery journey. We have learned each other's strengths and limitations and used this knowledge to support each other. Today, we work together in our nonprofit, in our community, assisting others who face similar challenges. One of my greatest achievements in life is that today I have a wonderful relationship with all of my children. I have the opportunity to see Emmanuel through his journey. I have been in recovery for almost 11 years. <laughs> I have watched him grow into a responsible and positive male figure and an advocate for change, not just for himself, but for others. The power of possibility of people in recovery is immense. The power of possibility is what has fueled our nation's ingenuity and growth. And our collective belief in the power of possibility is fundamental to our success, including our country's success in addressing major health issues. Time and again, we've come together to conquer challenges posed by health conditions. And we've succeeded in our efforts by implementing science-based policy and practices that reduce the incidence of life-threatening health conditions and that mitigate their symptoms. I am living proof there is hope after opioid addiction. You are looking at the true face of this epidemic, the true face of one of the lucky ones who happened to stumble into a treatment center that prioritized science and research over stigma and fear. And because of that, along with my own dedication to the hard work of recovery, I'm here to speak with you all today. My recovery means everything to me. For without my recovery, I likely would not have my life. And so I personally want to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of our leaders who are here today and to President Trump for his convening the Opioid Commission as they continue working to bring to the public's eye help and hope. It will take us all working together despite political affiliation or other backgrounds to turn this epidemic around. Welcome everyone to the 2017 National Recovery Month Luncheon. Across the nation, the, the opioid crisis is just uh, devastating our families and our children and taking a toll on our child welfare system. And we, as part of the recovery community, are finding solutions to help through peer support, recovery support services, and recovery community organizations. We have a network of over 100 recovery community organizations across the nation. The Recovery Month Annual Event Award Program is our salute to your efforts and your dedication and your hard work. On behalf of SAMHSA, 
I want to thank the, the awardees and all of you who've worked so tirelessly to make the National Recovery Month events around the country and around the world such a success. Our Native American citizens desperately need help and the governor and I are partnering with our tribes to provide solutions and to help find, find solutions and support them. Now is the time for every one of us to take action in our own lives, in our work, and in our communities. There's no shame in addiction. And there's so much hope and possibility in recovery. I am like more than 23 million other people across our great nation who have the disease of drug or alcohol addiction. And I am grateful that I am one of the faces and voices of recovery. To me, it has been my privilege to have worked with such an incredible cadre of people that are viscerally, viscerally engaged in the field of recovery. Not only having been with you through this journey, but having gone to so many events and seeing the real people in the community raise their voices and talk about their own recovery as the First Lady of North Dakota just did. For this National Recovery Month, what I feel is gratitude for everyone in this room that make your life and your commitment and your work to help those in recovery, to help those find that pathway, that run the programs. Where are my RCOs? I love RCOs. I love any of you that are working on these events and programs that, uh, that help people like my mom and dad. So incredibly grateful. I'm so proud of this field, and I'm glad to be a daughter of this field because there is so much hope and, um, uh, and sort of next steps that comes out of the families that, and the communities that are forever changed when we do this, forever changed when we do this. Thousands tune in across the country to this live stream event that took place on September 27th. It was an opportunity to bring the very best experts at HHS to you to provide information and answer questions about opioid addiction. The first thing I want to say is that whether you have a problem with medications like oxycodone, hydrocodone, hydromorphone, morphine, or heroin, these substances are all in the same class of drug. They're all opioids, and the treatments are the same. And treatment has basically three components. The first two are clinical components, and so those are medications. The second uh, part are psychosocial interventions that we provide to folks that, are, that we're helping to get into recovery. And then the third and very important part is the social supports, the community supports that are so critical to helping people to establish their recoveries. What recovery means to me is finding myself and realizing and re-realizing what my true vision for life was and what, my, what God had planned for me. I, uh, had a struggle with addiction for many years, which led to incarceration and some very difficult times. And when I found myself and realized that I had a pre-planned destiny that I didn't have, that I had something to give to others. Recovery to me actually allows me to take my abilities, my resources, my talents, and apply it to life. Uh, and and it was, it's actually been more than my wildest dreams uh, to actually be sober. I didn't even know there was another way to live. Um, and the recovery has given me all of that and more. It's a full circle for me. So what got me into recovery is learning that there is a community, that there is more to it, and that I am a part of it. And in, 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 in addition to that, is becoming a part of it and, and enhancing the voices of those that don't have it or can't express their, their needs or their difficulties or the challenges and the barriers and advocate and support them in any way that I can. From feeling lost, lonely, and chasing the drug, I chase recovery. And for me, it led to becoming 
an alcohol and drug counselor. But it certainly at that point gave me the zest and said, you know what, you can use your energy that was out there for, for drugs to be able to use it in recovery to help others. And finding other like-minded people who wanted to make change was truly wonderful. So I hope everybody will get involved and join this movement of the recovery community. Individuals, families, and whole communities uh, are getting re ready for recovery. And that's why we're um, advocating for greater, more recovery support services across the United States. You might not know everyone in your community, but if you did, you'd see that people in recovery from mental and substance use disorders are all around. Reach out for support and begin your recovery journey. Join the Voices for Recovery. Strengthen families and communities. For confidential information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referrals for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Recovery Month events were held from coast to coast, and the movement is becoming stronger and becoming more significant than ever as the nation grapples with the growing opioid crisis. Salt Lake City, Utah was the focal point of this year's Recovery Month celebrations. An estimated 4,000 people gathered at the Gallivan Center on September 9th to share the joy and the hope that comes with recovery. The event featured messages of encouragement and support from national and local elected officials, a recovery walk, a carnival, food trucks, and live music to show that recovery is real, recovery can happen, and that life after recovery is worth celebrating. Recovery uh, to me means a new way of living. Um, it means a new way of waking up in the morning, a new way of uh, a new structure in life. It means a way of bettering myself every single day, a way of making progress every single day. Recovery means uh, having some meaning and purpose in my life now. Recovery means serenity, it means happiness. Recovery means to me that I get to be a mother and a daughter and a friend, a sister. And recovery means to me is celebration. And that's what we're doing here today. We're, we are the national hub for um, the recovery month. And we have people here who have joined us from Washington, D.C., Faces and Voices of Recovery, um, SAMHSA, who have, who have come out today to celebrate with us. And we get some national attention here in Salt Lake City because we have an awesome recovery community. You are part of a fabric of people that are proclaiming recovery, that are staying present to family, to your community and that is to be lauded. This is my eighth recovery day. Um, you know, two of those years were as a client um, in treatment, and now I'm a woman in long-term recovery, and I love to see everyone that is working so hard and fighting for their lives, and that we can come together and show people that recovery is possible, and that we can have an amazing time. And perhaps the most important message of all to those in Salt Lake City was to never take for granted the hard work, the courage, and the dedication that it takes to achieve a lasting recovery. That's why we're here. We're here to continue the battle and support one another in that process. So how about a nice round of applause for everybody that's here and the miracle of our recovery. Phoenix, Arizona was the site of the 12th annual Art of Recovery Expo held at the Phoenix Convention Center on September 16th. This event featured roughly 100 exhibitors who came together to share their recovery expertise and provide resources to teachers, first responders, and members of the general public. I think it's so important to know that people recover every day, and just like many of you, they give back to their community and no one necessarily even knows it <laughs> until you have things like today. I heard about Recovery Month back in 2004 and there wasn't anything going on in Phoenix. And so I said to my husband, why don't we put on an event? And we didn't know what it was gonna be, but it turned out to be a fabulous one day, free to the public event. It's an opportunity for everybody to learn about uh, what the resources are that are available here, but also identify the problem. People can hear about every form of addiction and gain information. What we determined about this event is that people come from their halfway houses, they come from their sober living, they come in off the streets. Sometimes they have an hour and 
a half sober or 23 hours sober and they see people that are living sober and having fun and having abundance and um, being able to share and it just kind of helps them keep going during the hard parts. Only 10% of the some 24 million nationally that are addicted don't even get help. I mean, only 10%. So we've got a big job ahead of us. We've got to do better. And by coming together like this at the Art of the Recovery, we're making a statement that we care as a community. There's hope for all of us. Uh, addiction is a paralyzing, terribly destructive disease. And when we share groups like this, there's, we're sharing our experience, our strength, and our hope. More than a thousand participants converged on Denver, September 22nd through 26th, for NADAC's 2017 annual conference. Along with the chance to network with other professionals in the recovery field, NADAC featured nearly 80 exhibitors and 60 presentations, showcasing the latest trends and issues in the field of addiction and recovery. On behalf of NADAC, the staff, the membership, uh, and most importantly, all of you, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Mile High City. Fantastic. We are so excited to have you here in Denver for these wonderful days of education, training, and the community of NADAC. I haven't been to a national NADAC conference before, so it's allowed me the opportunity to connect with uh, a lot of other professionals in the field. And also, I think, come to the realization that as the, the du director of a small nonprofit agency, that I'd like our agency to be our agency to become more involved in NADAC, uh, perhaps at the state level. Right. Recovery has allowed me to come out of a background of a long history of abuse and alcohol and drug dependence and uh, actually go into my master's program, get my uh, licensed professional counselor degree, specialize in addictions and be a licensed addiction counselor. And not too long ago, I just finished my doctorate. So I went into treatment, I worked on my mental health, I worked on my addictions, and it changed my whole life. No matter how far down we've gone, there's always somebody inside that wants to get and stay clean and sober. And our job is to honor that part of ourselves. I have seen so many people on their seventh, eighth, ninth try. Finally, the light bulb goes on and they find a connection to community and they find that support and that hope. At some point you find yourself actually living in recovery and loving it. You just have to give it the chance. You just have to stay plugged in long enough for it to become your life. One of the great things that recovery can do is reconnect yourself with yourself and then with the other people. It's a fantastic place to be. There's no such thing as impossible when it comes to recovery and you can find help and you can find friendship and you can find love. The largest recovery event in the nation took place in Philadelphia. An estimated 27,000 people gathered for last year's ProAct Recovery Walk. The huge turnout shows how people in recovery are no longer hiding in the shadows, but are marching in the open for all to see. This event also featured powerful speeches from national and local officials. It's up to us to build a movement that ends discrimination, ill-informed policies, and prejudicial bias. These have existed for far too long for far too many of us. Sure, our cause may look a little different than others in history, but it's just as important and just as significant. We stand at a major turning point in our society. Philadelphia is about to become the first major collegiate recovery city in America. Way back when we started, anonymity was key. And we formed, joined, and assisted this organization to put a face and a voice on recovery. I've gotten the opportunity um, as a person in recovery to go back to school, to become a community advocate, to really sort of like go towards those dreams and have like a really kind of like enriching life that actually makes me really happy. It's really important for different community um, organizations to work together on this because we're just trying to, number one, decrease the stigma of mental illness and substance use disorder. We need to have a united voice. And I'm so grateful that I'm still clean and I continue to get better. I want to get better and better and better. My message of hope is that recovery equals life. These four events demonstrate the many faces and voices of recovery 
from the professionals to the people just getting started on their journey, to those living full, productive lives in long-term recovery. And with the support of peers and professionals, not only is recovery possible, but people can also find joyful lives on the other side of addiction. For more information on National Recovery Month, to find out how to get involved or to locate an event near you, visit the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. For persons living with a mental and substance use disorder, recovery opens the door to a life full of hope. Taking steps toward healthy living requires courage, persistence, and determination. Now that's something we can all celebrate. I know from my own experience that recovery provides improved health and wellness, the ability to live a self-directed life, and the opportunity to reach one's full potential. This transformation creates a positive ripple effect for everyone and everything, our families, friends, workplaces, and throughout our communities. Today, millions of Americans are living their lives in recovery. However, we must work together to reach those still in need of help. I want to encourage as many of you as possible to share stories of recovery from mental and substance use disorders. Together, let's talk about the benefits we experience when we invest in health, home purpose, and community. You can be an agent for positive change. Help someone find their path to recovery. I hope this show inspires you to get involved and to organize a Recovery Month event in September or activities throughout the year. For information on how to get started, go to the Recovery Month website at recoverymonth.gov. There you will find examples of previous events, information on planning an event, and fundraising ideas. When you visit the site, you'll see that participants use their imaginations to organize all kinds of creative events. We look forward to highlighting your 2018 Recovery Month event in our next showcase of events. On behalf of the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, thank you all for all that you do to support this effort. Let's keep this exciting work going.